Welcome to another Indie Dev Showcase, highlighting the many indie games we play here on the channel. If you'd like to submit a game for a future video, please reach out. But otherwise, let's begin. We are starting things off with Rogue Match the Extra Planar Invasion. This is a combination of RPG, roguelike, and Match 3. You are exploring a magical castle full of monsters, creatures, and elemental forces. In order to brave the rooms, you must use the power of the elements and matching three or more in a row in order to survive and move from room to room. In this one, the rooms are randomly generated as you explore. Your job is to match the various elements, which will kind of do damage around them. You can also use different spells as well. Every time you match around, the enemies will move or react. If they get too close to you, of course, they will do damage. And your mission, of course, is to finish them all off before more enemies spawn in. As you explore, you can find unique items that will give you benefits, spells, and all that other good stuff. And this one is definitely going to be on the advanced side. One of the issues I had with it is that it can be a little bit hard during some of like the boss encounters or some of the hard fights to know what is exactly happening with the enemy on each turn. As the game goes on, you need to match the correct elements to the enemies in order to do damage to them. But the problem is that if the enemy, let's say, is not next to an element that they're weak against, and you're just not able to get that hits in, eventually more enemies will spawn in, creating this kind of cascading effect that you're just not able to get the guy down before more enemies spawn in, which will take more time, and then you hopefully can get him down. If not, even more enemies will spawn in, and etc, etc. This one is definitely, again, going to be on the advanced side. So if you're a puzzle roguelike fan, then this should be an easy recommendation for you. Now, please keep in mind, the footage you're seeing is taken from Early Access and may not represent the current version of the game, as of course it has been updated since we played it on stream. And now we go to Joe Wander, The Enigmic Adventures. I'm pretty sure my tongue just ruined that part. This is a 3D platforming puzzle game. You play as Joe, who wanders. And he's exploring a variety of worlds looking for treasure, fame, glory, and MacGuffins along the way. So while the footage here does make this appear to be like a pure 3D platformer, it definitely focuses more on puzzle solving. You'll use Joe's ability to jump and whip around to solve a variety of puzzles, collect items, and try to get those treasures you need. This one does have a little bit of combat to it, but this is definitely more focused on the puzzle solving and exploration, rather than again on a lot of jump tech, movement based challenges, etc. I do like the aesthetics of this one, going for kind of like a very cartoony, yet still kind of like realistic looking like environment, that sweet sweet grass and the leaves textures that you're seeing. So the difficulty of this one again is going to be more puzzle related. If you're looking for, again, a 3D platformer, this is probably not going to do it for you. The platforming and jump tech is kept relatively benign, but the puzzles will get more advanced, especially if you're trying to get all the MacGuffins in the levels, all the coins, all the gems, and all that. There's going to be multiple worlds, multiple puzzles, etc, etc. And I was enjoying this one. Not the... I think most complicated game you're going to play anytime soon, but if you're a fan of puzzling and looking for a fun adventure to go on, then I would recommend you check this one out. We now go to Creeping Deck Pharaoh's Curse. This is deck building roguelite that takes the Slave of Spire formula to Egypt. You're going to be battling lots of Egyptian themed monsters, gods, and more on your quest for treasure, upgrades, and more cards. The formula again should be familiar to anyone who's played a deck builder in the past 7 years. Each battle you'll use your variety of cards to deal with enemies of all shapes and sizes. After a battle is over you can add a card to your deck. You also gain the ability to upgrade cards and get more materials and resources for future runs. Now a key aspect of creeping here is that this is definitely on the rogue light side. 
you, when you start playing the game, you can't even start like the higher challenges. You kind of get access to kind of different dungeons or sections. Every time you win one, you unlock a new kind of dungeon or modifier that raises the difficulty up. Maybe enemies will gain more stats, or enemies will appear, etc., etc. And win or lose, you'll get access to various resources that you can use to unlock new features before each match, such as starting with better stats, better cards, upping your health, damage, stuff along those lines. So, if you're not a fan of the roguelite side, in terms of progression kind of being dictated by resource spending, you're probably not going to like this one. But, the roguelite nature does make it a little bit easier to do the higher difficulties or get access to better self right at the start. In terms of the deck and card design, from what we play of this one, I didn't really see anything that kind of stood out above the myriad of deck builders we played. And that probably is the most damning thing about Creeping Deck. If you're looking for a brand new reinvention of the genre, it is certainly not going to be it. But if you're looking for another deck builder that you've played many times before, but this time with a good amount of progression and roguelite-ness to it, then I would at least give this one a try. And we now go to another roguelite with Paper Planet. This is a tower defense style one where you are part of, well, a plan made out of paper. And you must launch your projectiles and dodge a myriad of bullets, patterns, and other things that are coming to get in your way. Some enemy attacks you can just dodge normally, others you must destroy before they reach the planet, which will cause you damage. After each wave, you are free to spend your accumulated paper clips in order to unlock a myriad of items, many that will either enhance your base stats or change the properties of your tower, bullets, and so on. I like the combination of items in this one as it can get very crazy in terms of how your bullet pattern grows and how you become your own form of bullet hell. Get to the end and you can unlock additional harder difficulties, there's bonus challenges, bosses and all that great stuff. I personally found this one to be a little bit on the easier side, but again you're telling someone who's played a lot of action roguelikes before. This is a very charming game, another great example of how you can add a live variety through your various items, unlocks, and so on and so forth. So I would definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a planet defense and you enjoy being a bullet hell unto yourself. We now switch over to Rift Rangers. This is our one and only bullet heaven for the showcase this week. This is a Super Sentai inspired bullet heaven where you and your various multicolored rangers must save the city from evil. Now, the game has a really expressive look, as you can see through the pixel art right now. What makes it unique from a lot of the other Bullet Heavens we've played is that, while you aren't going to be attacking directly, as we all know, instead of you having automatic weapons that follow or attack off of you, all your weapons are built as towers that you can place down at a moment's notice. You are limited to a certain number of towers based on upgrades and unlocks that you can have out at one time. As you level up, you'll be able to unlock upgrades for towers, unlock new towers that can appear, and again, you've played any bullet heaven, you should know what this formula is. As the match goes on, you'll need to run to kind of specific points that deal with kind of like the big bad monsters, and keeping your health alive all throughout. After a battle is over, win or lose, you'll be able to use your med unlocks to get access to new towers, raise base stats, and again, anything that you've seen from a bullet heaven before. I like the aesthetics and the style of this one. It still follows in kind of like, I guess we're now like the early stages of bullet heavens. So if you're looking for one that has more interaction or more kind of like match progression, as we've seen with some of the more modern trees, you're not going to get that here. But if you enjoy the kind of, I guess, like the first wave of Bullet Heavens with you holding down a point and just killing everything that comes slowly around you, then this one is definitely worth a shot. And for the last game of today's episode, we turn to a mid-autumn. The footage you're seeing is taken from Early Access and may not represent the current version of it. This is an action roguelite where you play as a girl who has moved in with her grandmother to discover that, well, she's now the new guardian of a mystical portal where gods, monsters, and more tend to reside. 
in order to keep the peace and save her town, she's going to become the new guardian, whether she likes it or not. The kind of twist of this game is that you pick up kind of like lunar blood, which operates as your resource for casting your various spells. If you keep it for too long or take a hit, it will rot, forcing you to lose health when you use it. But by hitting them with this, it can also do a little bit more damage, and there's timing to when to use your spells, obviously at the most optimal. Now obviously, since you're going to have to keep your health up and to use your attacks, your health recovery is going to be a little bit more lenient in this one compared to some of the other action roguelites we've played. And just like any other good example, win, lose, or draw after a run, you'll be able to complete quests and unlock persistent upgrades and unlocks for future runs. Now, the version that we played was still very early. I think this footage you're seeing is from like week one of early access. So we definitely ran into some issues just in terms of readability. A lot is going on on screen, especially when it fills up with lots of enemies and you're trying to make use of your powers, not get hit, avoid lunar rot, etc, etc. And you're going to be in for kind of slow goings in terms of the meta unlocks, at least from the version that we played. Still, the story and the setting are quite interesting and different for the genre. And there is certainly potential here. Now, as I said at the beginning, since we played this in early access, I don't know what they've added or if they've added anything new to it. So, I would recommend this one if you're looking for a different kind of roguelite. But again, keep in mind that it is still in early access, and hopefully things will go swimmingly for them. So with that, we're going to wrap things up for the showcase this week. I'd like to thank all the developers who submitted games. You'll find links to everything down below. And if you'd like me to go your game for a future stream and coverage, please reach out. But with that said, have a good night, and I hope you enjoyed the games. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the video, do the YouTubing stuff. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon, and if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my game design books.